Here behind the Church of St. John and Augustine in Thomas Street, and at the edge of Scandinavian and medieval Dublin, are the sites of many early industries such as shoemaking, pottery and brewing. And here too is the entrance to Pyre's Distillery, built on what was once part of the lands of the medieval Friary of St. John. The chemistry of distilling good whiskey is far from fully understood. It's still very much a craft industry even today. Distillers learned from experience. Some prospered and some failed. To most people, the main ingredients are water, malted barley, a pot still and a long maturation in an oak cask. However, it's full of surprises. This grass on the roof of a bonded warehouse in John's Lane is mown each summer. Why the soil and grass is there, nobody now really knows for certain. But the warehouse, with its hermetically sealed roof, cool in summer and relatively warm in winter, produces the right result. On the 29th of September, 1785, a plot of ground known as the Friary Gardens was leased from the Countess of Charleville by James Power. He started with a hostelry and then founded the distillery in 1791, initially producing about 6,000 gallons of spirits a year. The history of the distillery can be pieced together from several sources. Company records, excise returns, old drawings and, of course, from the buildings and machinery themselves. By the end of its first 100 years, the head distiller, whose office this was, controlled one of the largest distilleries in the world, employing about 250 men and producing almost one million proof gallons a year. Whiskey is distilled from beer, which a distiller calls wash the beer being brewed from barley and malt. Barley from the fields is moist and has to be dried before being ground, particularly so if millstones like these are to be used. Made of heavy slabs of granite and carefully dressed to allow the grist run free, they are an eloquent testimony to an ancient craft. Brewing starts with the mixing together of the barley and malt grists in a mash tun or keeve with water at a temperature of about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. This mash tun, one of two in John's Lane, is comparatively modern. It was made by Spence of Cork Street. The heart of the brewing process is mashing. The scale of the machinery, the sense of power, the humidity and the curiously pleasant smell of warm crushed grain is not easily forgotten. The quality of the water used is important and this is one of the major factors in locating a distillery. The rest of the grist is added with further water until the whole huge vessel is full. Science now has explained to us what generations of brewers discovered instinctively, that in the mashing process, the enzyme present in the malted barley 
converts the starches into a sugar solution. In time, the rakes stop their incessant beating and the grains, or what's left of them, settle to the bottom and the long process of draining the mash starts. These mash tons hold about 33,000 gallons each and this liquor is the raw material for beer, known in the trade as wort. This Dante-esque vision is something of a shock, and one which is unlikely to be seen again. These men are shoveling out the spent grains through small holes in the floor of the drain tun. Although the work is tough, it, it's not dangerous. It's rather like taking strenuous exercise in a Turkish bath. But it does serve as a good reminder that working conditions in our industrial past were far from ideal, and often worse. <laughs> 